Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We are in Denver, Colorado, Cedia 2019. I'm Gene Della Sala. I'm here with Tony Liotta. And for the next couple of days, you guys are going to live vicariously through us because we're going to show you all of the great new audio and video products that are going to be coming out this year and next year. So let's go inside and take a look and see what's new. So our first stop, we are in the LG booth over here, looking at their awesome displays, of course. I mean, it goes without saying, LG has awesome TVs. But now they're also getting real serious about sound bars. You can see over here, they're actually powered with Meridian. So I'm not sure what that means. I know Meridian is a super high-end company when it comes to active speakers. It looks like they're either licensing their speaker technology or their DSP technology into these LG sound bars. This one is an Atmos module, or an Atmos version, I should say. So it has two little, looks like two inch speakers up firing, of course, the bouncy house. They are on an angle. It looks like there's some type of a waveguide in there to control the dispersion. And according to their spec sheet over here, it's a 5.1.2 system, 570 watts. Not sure how they rate that power, but that's something we're gonna be getting into this year because we are working on a soundbar rating protocol. Hopefully by next year, we'll start producing some results on that. Trying to keep these guys honest, trying to make sure that you guys are getting the real power with these sound bars to fill your room with decent sound if you can't put a discrete speaker system in here. So this looks pretty interesting. We're gonna hopefully get one in next year to review. Comes with a little powered subwoofer, sleek design. It looks like it fits a good 55 inch TV. So it makes an easier installation as opposed to speakers. We'll see how it sounds. We don't know yet. We can't tell on the trade show floor, but we will report back to you on that. Hey guys, this is Tony here for Audioholics. This is Kyle from Samsung. He's gonna tell us a little bit more about their new Atmos enabled uh, soundbars. Absolutely. So uh, when we start on our Q60 soundbar, this actually is not gonna be an Atmos enabled soundbar. So this is gonna be our first Q series soundbar without that feature, but it is gonna have one of our other exciting audio bar features. So this will be using our acoustic beam technology, which will actually direct the sound out of these uh, acoustic beams along the top of each side of the, the soundbar. So they'll actually have 28 holes on each side of the soundbar that directs the sound up at an angle and then it actually reflects that audio back out into the room. Uh, we actually partner with Harman Kardon on these on these sound bars to actually improve the audio quality. So it helps uh, drive a little bit better audio with uh, with our lineup on our sound bars. So what's the difference then between an Atmos enabled sound bar? Because this one has the array on the top, and just a regular Atmos uh, speaker or sound bar that you have. So it's a, the configuration of how the audio channels are working. So this particular sound bar has, is gonna be a 5.1 setup. So this means it's gonna have a left speaker, a center speaker, and a right speaker, as well as the, the top speakers are actually working as the rear drivers in the system. This will work as the, the left rear and the right rear. You can add a rear channel to this by adding the rear wireless kits to add more rear depth of audio to this. Um, but with the way it's currently configured, it is just as a full surround sound system. When you move up to say like the Q70 soundbar that we have right next to it, it looks very similar to the Q60. The difference is gonna be the way that the acoustic beam works on this, these are actually gonna be designed to work as the Atmos speakers. So they're gonna be able to be there to do the three-dimensional audio to kind of give you that depth or the, the feel that the audio is gonna be all throughout the room. So does it have side speakers then on it? Including? No, this one does not have side speakers. It still just has the left, the center, and the right, but it does have the two upward firing speakers, the same acoustic beam technology we have here, just angled down at 17 degrees to give a little bit more over the room effect to give you that same Atmos effect that you get in, say, in a movie theater or something like that. Okay, let's take a look. As we go through the lineup, we get to more of our higher end bars with our Q80 sound bar. This is going to have those side firing speakers. So this is going to be a 5.1.2 versus the Q70 that was a 3.1.2. 
So how we got the additional drivers on this one is not only do we have the, the left, the center, and the right, but now we have a left side firing and a right side firing that helps reflect sound off the sidewalls to give you that kind of a more immersive sound. Plus the drivers in the top are more single drivers that, that are gonna be uh, giving you that Atmos type of sound. Uh, when we stepped from the 60 to 70, we also did go up in subwoofer size. So we went to an eight inch subwoofer from the six inch before. Okay, great. Let's take a look at your top of the line model. Okay, so when we step up to the Q90 soundbar, the Q90 soundbar is going to be a very similar bar to what the Q80 is. So the same driver configuration you have in the Q80, but what you're going to gain are the two rear speakers here. So it's going to go from a 5.1.2 to a 7.1.4, which means that these drivers here that are going to be in the back of the room will have not only normal rear speakers, but also upward firing speakers. So it gives you even more three-dimensional audio for your experience. All right, so I want you to explain that again to our viewers. The rear speakers aren't just rear speakers. What else do they have? So the rear speakers are gonna have not only front firing drivers, so they work as rear speakers, but they also have upward firing drivers that allows them to give that Atmos speaker and the Atmos sound. Much like the front speakers on the soundbar give that Atmos style sound to give that three-dimensional effect within the room. So again, this is Tony for Audioholics, and uh, we had a great time here with Samsung. Thank you very Absolute. much. Absolutely. Thank you very much. All right, guys, so we are at the KLH booth at Cedia. It is really cool to see the KLH brand back. This is one of the oldest audio brands in the industry, founded by Henry Kloss. And I'm gonna let Jeff uh, give us a little introduction on these products. We've already covered the box products before on Audioholics, but now they've got some new products in this room. So Jeff Dan is gonna take us on the 60 second tour of these new products. Well, thank you, welcome. So we're introducing custom products in a Faraday series, which is our standard series. And one of the most exciting things and distinctive things we're going to be uh, highlighting is the Maxwell series, which is a step up from our standard series. And in architectural with custom, we have a in-ceiling based on a concentric driver at 349. And then we go into the in-wall speakers at 499 and 650 list very high powered capabilities and the key is that they're engineered enclosures and they're tuned so this is like putting a cabinet solution in your in your architectural style uh, uh, application and based on the feedback from this concentric driver with wide dispersion we have a thousand dollar step up pair of bookshelves that will be manufacturing soon at a thousand dollars a pair in very exotic woods well, that looks awesome. I think we have our work cut out for us this year to take a look at some of these products. Appreciate the uh, attention you gave us here on these products today, Jeff. And until next time, keep listening. My friends, we spent two days on the show floor of Cedia Expo 2019, covered a ton of products. I've got a ton of sake in me right now, so I'm trying to give you a recap when I'm a little bit buzzed, so I have a little cheat sheet here in case I need it. But one thing I could tell you is the two focuses I've seen on the show was ease of setup and just processors now that could get you 16 channels of surround sound were very, actually at very good prices. I was really blown away. So what I mean by ease of setup is we saw Epson's near field projector that comes with a screen you could literally set up in 30 minutes quicker than you could set up a flat panel display by drilling you know, into the drywall and putting up one of those uh, mounts for it. Then we saw Savant Audio that basically had um, Artisan soundbar with Savant control logic built into it makes it really easy to set up scene selections and all these other things really slick uh, wireless setup hey uh, wireless setup with the surround speakers that was awesome the processors I mean there were so many freaking processors that were being shown here that it's kind of mind-boggling we had our cam show a multitude of processors, 16 channels. We had audio control show processors. We had Integra show processors. And you're looking at 
you know, getting beyond 7.1.4 for around four grand. You don't have to buy Internet Direct to do this anymore. These are brick and mortar kind of uh, companies that are offering these solutions. I find it amazing that Harman, who now owns Arkham, which Samsung owns Harman, but I find it amazing that Harman is using DRAC Live in their products. That speaks real volumes for how much they feel about that room correction system, especially with the new base alignment where you could do multi-sub correction. That's awesome, that's real news to us. Mart Logan kind of blew us away with their demo of their Line Array in-wall speaker. I couldn't believe the kind of output they were getting in there. Um, we heard Lady Gaga's uh, The Shallow song that she was singing with Bradley Cooper sounded very lifelike and dynamics of course they had the anthem arc room correction so the bass was always on point in that room as always we hear with Martin Logan demos that was a highlight kaleidoscape kind of was like it was like a deer in the headlights moment for me because I wasn't following Kaleidoscape for years, and now they have this ability to give you better than Blu-ray kind of resolution for audio and video. You download the movies through their server, you watch it through their hard drives, and there's all these different functionalities built into that. You could control lighting events, you could change your aspect ratio on your screen. That system does it all automatically. That was a really awesome moment. We looked at some lighting controls from a couple of companies that are basically telling you if you want to do LED all in your house and you want to do LED backlighting, the best way to do it is to convert it to DC and then run cabling throughout the house to put LED lights. It's not the LED lights that burn out over time, it's really the electronics because of the heat. So to actually separate that into its own unit and to do that, say, in a garage or whatever. So if anything happens with the electronics, you don't have to rip stuff out of your walls. I thought that was an epiphany for me because I want to start looking into doing more backlighting and more background lighting in the house. So we're going to be covering more of that stuff in the future. I don't know what else I, I need to cover on here. We had a lot of stuff. Sound United, of course, had the Polk Legend series, and we were so happy to see that line of speakers. We heard that at their Sound United event. Finally, we could talk about it now. That was an awesome experience to see the SDA line back in action. Do you know of anything you want to cover, Tony? RBH, of course. So another, the last thing we want to cover is RBH. They had their in-wall speakers with the giant AMT tweeter. It's one of the best AMTs on the market. So they take their SVT box speaker, put it in the wall basically without the subs, and the output we were hearing out of that was just legendary. They also have an active monitor. It's their first one, an 8-inch with an AMT tweeter. And they've got a dual 12-inch subwoofer. The passive version of it's going to be for around 1000 bucks. The active version to be determined. Hopefully it meets our extreme baseaholic rating. Last but not least, Monoprice had a Goliath-sized subwoofer with dual 15-inch drivers. Thing weighed almost 300 pounds. Exceeds our extreme baseaholic rating. It has 6 dB more output than the 15-inch ported model that we reviewed only a few months ago. We're not going to review that model because it's too heavy, but we rest assured that thing is a massive monster. Monoprice also has their 16-channel um, Atmos DTSX Oro 3D processor and that looks pretty awesome too. So it was a great show. There was a good turnout here. We saw a lot of new products that we definitely want to be covering this year and beyond. So I hope you guys enjoyed our coverage. And Tony Liotta, we thank you, the guy behind the camera. Shake your head please now and nod. Thank you very much for covering the show for us. And my friends, until next time, keep listening.